Okay, today I'm going to try to do um, maybe the impossible here, but I get a lot of calls, uh, mostly because I'm selling the Thickums on eBay. I sell the injector driver modules, and a lot of people, probably 20%, will call me up at the, after they're done and say, Ron, my truck still doesn't start. What else can it be? And, um, you know, then I also get phone calls at least two or three a day. I'm getting different calls, different people asking. And it's never been possible for me to try to tell you everything because there's just too many things to monitor. Not, not too many, but things that weren't easily monitored without having a four-level IDS that I knew of. But I've been doing some searching, and I came across the scan gauge. Um, I contacted them. I was looking into different ones. Scan gauge, by far, had the best customer service. They spoke with me. They talked with uh, they, they were helping me out. I told them what my intentions are, and they're, they're trying to walk me through this. Because the thing is, too, not only... The scan gauge makes it now for the ability for us to monitor this truck um, and check out for any, any of your trucks for a reason for a no start. With the knowledge that I'm going to give you here in this video and with this gauge easily available at your AutoZone stores and AutoZones are nationwide. So that way if you're broke down, you're on the side of the road, doesn't matter. You're in Yosemite, you're anywhere, you're in Florida and you need help right now, you can go to AutoZone, you can get one of these and they come... Uh, you know, generic, where they, they're not sport specific, you're going to have to do a little bit of programming, and I'm going to, on another video, I'm going to show how to do that. That'll be too much for me to try to do with that, and also diagnose a truck, so that'll be on a second one that we'll cover. But the, um, now with this, I'm going to be able to tell you everything that you can do, if your truck's a no start, or what's wrong with it, you're going to be able to diagnose it by using this, and with a little bit of knowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and go through it. The first thing is, um, if it's your truck, you obviously know the history. History is important, uh, such as are you using any fluids? What happened right before it died? Were you going on the road? Were you under full load? The year of the truck, all that stuff matters because there's common things with each one. And if you go back through and listen to this, I'm going to hopefully try to cover each one uh, with what's going on with it. Because it, it, what's important, you need to have Ficum Sync. Ficum Sync is a camshaft and crankshaft sensor inputs to the PCM that gives it positioning that go ahead that also lets the injectors fire so Ficum sync is important Ficum main power or Ficum M power that's the power out to the injectors it has to be about 45 volts um, if it drops below I mean yes they can run 20 30 volts but it can also cause a problem so Ficum sync Ficum M power is important ICP injection control pressure is very important that as a false input, I've got another video showing that, but that as a false input, that's what all the calculations of the oil pressure that drives the fuel pressure, because the oil pressure's pushing the fuel into the engine. So ICP, from the start, it's very important. I've, we've had bad sensors where they read 200 or 500 or 600 PSI key on engine off, where that's impossible to have that kind of pressure. All you can have is atmospheric pressure, maybe 12, 15 PSI. So ICP, key on engine off, is important in what it achieves. And the other uh, one that's important that we're going to monitor now with the scan gauge is IPR, injection pressure regulator. That's Think of it as a shutoff valve. You've got a pump back there on the back of the engine. Anytime it's turning, it's cranking over, that pump's turning. Uh, this isn't exact, so don't, you know, fault me for not being exact. I'm just going to say that pump's always creating 3,000 pounds of pressure as it's turning on back of the engine. At an idle, it needs 500 just to start. So we need to see 500 PSI of ICP pressure um, to do. And what's important now is the IPR percentage because I'll get guys too that'll, this will, this will catch you. This one's a, a tough one. IPR, injection pressure regulator, works from 15 to 85 percent. 15 it's dumping everything, 85% more or less stopped everything, and it's at 85% it's trying to give all the pump power to the injectors or to the rails to power up. You never want to see either, at either end, um, 15, 14.84 you might see on the scanner. Now that's key on engine off, that's okay. I'm talking while cranking or running. You never ever want to see your IPR go to 15 or 85%. If it does, it's compensating for something. You have a leak, you have a bad IPR valve, you have a weak pump, and that's another thing too. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have to go back there and listen to this. 83, 80, I'm sorry, 
2003-2004 trucks with the round style high pressure oil pump or H-pop, they fail. They can go bad. The bearing can go out the side. I'll show that in another video. Um, if you're not getting the pressure, it could be your high pressure oil pump on an 0304. If it's a 05 and above, yes, it could be the pump. I've done two. I work on these trucks 10 hours a day since they came out. And it's all I do all day long on these trucks. I've done two. So, yes, it's possible. Is it likely? No. It's almost never a pump on an 05 and above. It's the, the what they call the STC fitting, the dummy plugs, the slang we have them, or the injector rail plugs. That can cause it. It's a leak. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about different ways to try to see what it is. But that's, again, this video will be too long to try to cover that stuff. I'm going to try to cover, when you ask, tell me your truck doesn't start, what else could it be? That's what I'm going to cover. So, and, and the last thing that, that we need to look for is fuel. Is it good fuel? Is the, uh, no contamination? And do we have fuel pressure? We can't monitor that. There's no way to monitor that. You will need to check that either with a manual gauge or at least we can try to listen for the fuel pump and we can see if the the uh, the fuel filter is full. And the same way with base oil pressure. Of course, we can't have injection pressure. Um, that's what the IPR and all the stuff is pushing the oil in without base oil pressure. So those are the things that we're going to look for. If your truck doesn't start, you're missing one of those. You're missing something out of that. So now that's what we have to find out is what it is it, uh, related to the fuel and different stuff. The main, the most obvious things, of course, would be the, the FICM and injection pressure. So I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and hook up the scan, the scan gauge two, and we're going to monitor those PIDs and find out which one's missing and what to look for and um, what, what's going on. And I'll discuss each one as we go along. So let's hook up the scanner. Okay, now in this scenario, again, because most of my concerns, the customers' concerns, are crank no start. So that's what we have. We have a crank no start. If it's a customer, again, I'm going to ask them, are you using any fluids? Have you added any fluids? Any other issues? Did it happen all at once going down the roads? Has there been any deterioration? Because usually, like, a, a, a FICM goes bad over time. A FICM will cause a, uh, uh, especially hard starts in the morning. Uh, FICMs normally don't go out all at once. And if the FICMs do go out, normally the battery takes out the FICM. So that's what happens. Um, if they're adding fluids and I start thinking, okay, it's overheated. We've got other issues going on there. Um, so I want to start looking at that. Uh, overheated or working really hard, 03, 04s usually cause a high pressure pump to give us issues. If it's just deteriorated over time, um, maybe every now and then it uh, doesn't want to start, especially like when they go through a drive-through, you know, when it's hot and they shut off just for a minute, they order, they go to start, and it has a long crank or doesn't want to start. That's common on the 05 and up, and that's usually a high-pressure uh, leak in the high-pressure system, whether it's your dummy plugs or the coupler fitting. That's normally what it does. Long crank in the morning, um, that's normally the, uh, the oil leaking out of the oil rails, the high-pressure pump system, and that's usually the dummy plugs. The couplers doesn't leak down. The oil on the oil rails, when they leak down, when the dummy plugs go bad, then the, um, the oil will leak out of them, and you have to crank, and it's slowly building the oil pressure up, and it's filling up that whole cavity for the, the oil rail on top of the injectors, and until that pressure builds up over 500 PSI, the injectors don't turn on. So you have long cranks in the morning, then we start to think about the, uh, the dummy plugs causing it. That's what I'm saying. The history is always important. But let's just say this truck came in. I don't know anything about it. All I know is the crank no start. So I always go out. I look at I check my fluid levels. Does it look like it's been maintained? Does it have any issues? Does it look like somebody's been working on it and damaging stuff? Because that really throws you off. But if it's a, uh, uh, you open it up, all the fluids are full. Customer says he's not adding any. Then what we do is we uh, go back. and Because this bit me a few times, so I've learned this is first. Always do the easiest uh, things first. So what we do is we'll go back here and we'll smell the fuel. Just take off the cap. If there's gasoline in there, you'll know. The, the, the vapor is undeniable. If there's gasoline in there, the, sometimes, now it depends too. The ones that put in one or two gallons and caught themselves, those are the worst because the truck still runs, uh, but you lose the lubrication. Through the uh, from the gasoline in there, and it harms your injectors. It scores them. It ruins them. So you're actually better off when customers put in 10, 20 gallons because they don't want to run anymore. 
some of them might idle, smoke really bad, but those ones you get easy to find, it's good. When somebody just put a gallon or two in there, no, those, those are the hard ones to catch. And it also, like I said, it damages the injectors. Now, two, speaking of damaging the injectors, that's a, this is the second thing I'm going to do, because this kind of verifies the ficum and verifies the injectors. Once I've had the injectors completely stick on me from overheating, I had absolutely, the car had no codes, but I don't hear the injector cycle. That's really rare, and I mean, it's almost unheard of, but again, if you listen to this video, you follow everything, you should be able to find out why your car doesn't start. You may have to go back through and play it, but something in here is, should tell you why it doesn't start, and I'll tell you when it's rare. But what I'll do then is I'll go over to the car, and I'll turn the key on. I'm not sure how well that's coming through, but I'm listening to two things. One was the pre-cycle, the injector clatter. That was done to get rid of the stiction on the injectors. We, we had the solenoids and the injectors going and operating. Now, I know it's not 100%, but if you're broke down and you're trying to figure this out or you don't have any tools, if you hear that, most likely your ficum's okay. It's, I'm not saying your ficum's okay. I'm not saying everything's good. I'm saying most likely your ficum's okay. And you want it to be kind of consistent as far as not sporadic. If it's sporadic, you can have sticking injectors, you can have bad injectors, you can have half the ficum board burned out, but usually they still start. And the other thing I was listening for is the fuel pump. Now, when you turn the key on on these, you would normally hear a run for about 30 seconds. Uh, again, that doesn't mean that it's not fuel, not your pressure. I'm just going to be trying to tell you the odds, what's common with it, and how to die, what to do with it. So again, I'm going to turn it on, and we'll be listening to two things. We'll be listening to the hum of the fuel pump, and the injector pre-cycle, and also uh, I'm, this one I'm going to go down and actually put my hand on the fuel uh, pump and check it. The fuel pump's located right about here. Here we have the pre-cycle, the, pre the, the, the clatter. That's the uh, injector pump, the fuel pump. still hear it well it just shut off and I could feel it again that doesn't mean that you have fuel pressure but at least if your fuel pumps normally these fuel pumps are either working or they're not so uh, if you hear it again you don't know for sure if you have fuel pressure but at least we can kind of not go after that so now this is where the scan gauge comes in because again we need to have good fuel good fuel pressure thickum power thickum sink the IPR and the ICP.